Uh, I went to my local antique store and they had this vintage uh, Karina Clipper cigar box. Uh, you know, if I had to guess, it's probably around 40s, 30s or 40s. Um, on the back, you know, it says uh, cigars not to be sold for, I want to say, uh, less than 10 cents or more than 15 cents. So that kind of gives you an idea of the vintage. Um, the, the neck is a piece of oak that I just, uh, just shaped. Um, there's store-bought cheapy tuners. The strings are Ernie Ball, uh, super slinky, electric guitar strings. Um, potentiometers uh, from, from Radio Shack. I think they were 50 cents a piece or something like that. The uh, bridge and the tailpiece here are both little pieces of uh, aluminum angle iron. The, the uh, bridge is just flipped over and the tailpiece is standard angle iron, you know, right side up. Um, the nut is a piece of quarter inch aluminum round stock, solid aluminum. Uh, it's a three string. This is fretless, although you can see the frets, uh, they are flush with the neck and it's got kind of a high action and I built that so it can be played slide. Um, I don't know how to play. I don't know how to read music, but when I heard these, I was so impressed with the sound that uh, I just had to build one. I had to try it, and uh, and it, it turned out pretty darn good. Um, if you've looked at my old old videos, I actually have a couple of uh, that are I want to say they're called pickup winder, um, and there's some actual demos uh, of the winder that I built on the counter. That, uh, that I actually built this magnetic pickup with. This is a three-pole uh, magnetic pickup. It has 10,000 wraps of 42 gauge wire. And if you're not familiar with, with wire gauges, 42 gauge is like human hair, super small wire. And uh, it ohms out at about 5,200 ohms, something like that. Uh, it really sounds good. So I've got this thing set up right now. Uh, just on a, a clean channel so you can get an idea how it sounds. It's tuned to an open G. Again, I, I don't know how to play. I don't know how to read music, so uh, don't judge the quality of my playing, just the sound of the guitar. So here it is clean. It's going to be G, D, G. Hopefully I can get them all in here. These are all 
I found them on YouTube projects. The next one, we'll come over here and set up here, is called a fire piston. Now, I had never heard of these. This was something, again, that I stumbled onto uh, on YouTube. And uh, this is what we're looking at here. It's just a half-inch diameter aluminum shaft. I drilled and tapped the end and put a screw and a little wood drawer pull on it. Uh, it's got an O-ring seal on the end. I just basically I cut that slot with a hacksaw, and it's got a hole drilled in the end here. Um, the other half of it is just a piece of brass pipe. Um, and the idea is you want this to bottom out in here with a, you know, a quarter inch gap or so at the bottom. Uh, it's just got a little wooden plug glued in the end here. So, here we go. We'll give a little demo here. What I use in this is called char cloth, and if you're not familiar with it, all it is is cotton cloth. It's just cotton. This was actually a pair of blue jeans that I, uh, I charred in an oxygen-free environment, basically. I cut up little one-inch squares of blue jeans, threw them inside here, and threw this on top of a little burner, and uh, you know restricted the oxygen. It just had one tiny little hole in it, and that's how you make char cloth. Just apply heat to cotton uh, in an oxygen-restricted environment. You got char cloth, and this stuff takes a spark very, very easily. Um, you can see it's it's really powdery almost, but a one inch by one inch square will. <laughs> light several, several fires. So I just take a little chunk, just kind of roll it into a ball. I stuff it in the end, in that little hole that's in the end of this thing, just like so. So, no Vaseline jokes, you smart asses. So what I do is I take a little Vaseline and I just kind of lubricate the O-ring on here. Take your piece of pipe, Slip it inside, and just run it up and down slowly a couple times just to kind of lubricate the inside of this. Just slow. So then I'll run it up to the top, and there's a little bit of a technique to do this here. What I'm going to do is slam it down as hard and as fast as I can. Nothing on that one. There it is. And we're burning. So you take that little piece of char cloth, stick it inside something that'll burn easily. And you can blow it into a fire. Obviously, I didn't do so great that time. But. So that's how it works, just off of compression of air. Um, you compress the air, and it, it gets super, super hot, hot enough to ignite this char cloth. Um, kind of a neat little fire starter method. So that was another YouTube project. So we'll move on to the third and final YouTube project here. This is what's known as an alcohol stove. Doesn't look like much. What it is is just a couple of, uh, oh, you can see, hey, I dated the bottoms of these. This was the second one I built with a date. They're just uh, basically the bottoms of Pepsi cans cut off, slipped in together with various holes, numbers of holes, diameters of holes in different places. Um, I burn right here this yellow. Uh, Oh, geez, what is this? Methanol? I can't remember. Anyhow, long story short, this is what I use in them. Um, usually about an, an ounce of, uh, of this stuff is good for about a 10-minute burn. And, uh, you know, it boils a couple cups of water uh, in about six or seven minutes. So... What I'll do is, this is a little mess kit I put together here. We'll open this guy up. Everything fits inside here. This one is kind of an alcohol stove. This one is w what they refer to as a penny stove. Um, this is the very first one I built, if I remember right.